in the last lecture we created a message schema and based on that we created a message model now we are going to create an api to store the message which a user has sent to another user in the database so whenever a user will send a message to another user first that message should be saved in the database and then that message should appear for the receiving user so in this lecture let's go ahead and let's create an api for storing the sent message in the database for that let's go to controllers folder and there let's create a new controller and i'm going to call it as message controller in there we are going to write some import statements so first of all we want to import router then we are also going to import the auth middleware we are going to import the chat model and we are also going to import the messages model so i'm going to call it as message all right so these are the imports we need now let's go ahead and let's create a post route because when a user will send a new message it is going to send a post request to the server for creating that message so here on this router we are going to handle that post request let's specify the path of this route here so here it is going to be new message then we are also going to use this auth middleware because this route should only be accessible to the authenticated users and then if everything goes well in the auth middleware then we want to execute this callback function which is going to run asynchronously and this callback function is going to receive the request object and the response object let's go ahead and let's add a try catch block from this catch block let's return an error response so there the status will be 400 for bad request and we are going to send a response and in that response we are going to set the message and we are going to set the message to error dot message and let's set the success to false okay now let's go to the try block and here let's write the logic of saving the message in the database so the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to store the message in the database in the message collection and the second thing which we need to do is we also need to update the last message in the chat collection so if I go to chat model, there you will see that we also have this last message property. So we want to set this last message property with the latest message, which we are going to receive for a given chat. Okay. All right. So let's first write the logic for saving the incoming message in the database. So we are going to get the message in the request body. So here from that request body, we are going to create a message object for that. I'm going to use this message model and to that message model, we are going to pass request dot body. Okay. And let's go ahead and let's store it in a variable. Let's call it new message. And once this new message is created from the request body, we are going to save it in the database and for saving something in the database, we are going to use save method. On this object okay and let's go ahead and let's store it in a variable and let's call it saved message basically once this save method will save that message in the database it is also going to return that document from the collection so that we are assigning to this saved message variable so the saved message variable is going to store the newly created message object which we have saved in the database in the messages collection once this is done, once the new message is saved in the database, we are also going to update the last message property of the chat object. So here, let's go ahead and let's create a variable. Let's call it current chat. And to get the current chat, we are going to find the chat based on the chat ID. So let's say chat dot find by ID. And to this, we are going to pass the chat ID. So the request body which we are going to receive, it is going to store a message object and in the message object, if I go to message.js model, 
there we also have this chat id property so using this chat id we are going to get the chat object so here we are going to say request dot body dot chat id okay so this is going to return us that chat whose id matches this chat id and this is also going to run asynchronously so let's use this await keyword here okay so we are going to get the current chat now in that current chat we are going to set the last message so for that we can say current chat dot last message equals saved chat so here we have sorry saved message so here we have that saved message from that saved message we are going to read its text right the text is going to give us the current message or maybe what we can do is instead of only setting this last message to text if we go back to chat model here okay you will see that the last message is of type object id which is going to store an object id from the messages collection so here we are going to store the object id so here we will say dot underscore id so when we are going to create a message that message will have an underscore id property and we are going to assign that id to this last message and finally we are also going to save it so for that we can say current chat dot save and it will save this updated value of the last message in the database and here let's also use a wait keyword all right so first we are storing the message in the message collection and then we are also updating the chat collection and there we are updating the value of last message to which we are storing the id of the latest chat so we can write it in this way or what we can also do is let me comment this code so what we can also do is let me copy this line and we can write all these three in the same line so for example instead of using find by id what we are going to do is here we are going to use a method find one and update now when we are using this method here first we need to pass how do we want to find the document so for that we want to find the document using its underscore id property so for that here we will say underscore id and the id we are going to get from request body so again we can say request dot body dot chat id so using this chat id we are going to find a chat and once we have found that chat in the second argument we can specify what do we want to update it with so there we want to update that chat and in that chat we want to update the last message and we want to update it to saved message dot underscore id then what we will also do is we will increment the value of unread message count so for example if i go to chat.js there we also have this unread message count so this also we are going to update we are going to increment its value to one so here let's say unread message count and since we want to increment its value first we are going to use an operator dollar inc this operator is used for incrementing the value and whose value do we want to increment we want to increment the value of this unread message count property and by how much we want to increment its value we want to increment its value by one okay and once this is done let's also send a response so till here if everything is well that means the message is saved in the database and the chat object is also updated now let's go ahead and let's send a response so let's say response dot send and here i'm also going to use the status property because since we are creating a new resource here we are creating a new message in the database i'm going to send the status code as 201 and here let's pass an object in there let's set the message property and here let's say message sent successfully then let's also set the success property to true and then let's also send the data and in the data what do we want to send we want to send the saved message 
the message which we have just saved in the database okay with this let's save the changes next let's go ahead and let's export this router from this message controller so here let's say module dot exports and we want to export the router sorry this route let's save this file now let's go to app.js there first we are going to require that controller so for that let's create a variable let's call it message controller or message router equals require and here we are going to specify the path of the message controller so from the current directory we are going to go to the controllers folder in the controllers folder we have our message controller and from there we are exporting a route that will be assigned to this message router and now let's go and let's create the endpoint so again here we'll say app.use let's specify the endpoint path so it should be slash api slash message okay and as the second argument let's specify the router in this case we want to use the message router let's save the changes now let's go to message model so in the message model we need to specify the chat id we need to specify the sender the message and read now if you don't specify the value for this read by default it will be false so let's go to postman and let's test this api before that let me save this request so this is for get all chats let's save it let's call it get all chats and let's save it in chats controller okay let me close some of these so i'm not going to create a new chat i'll close it i'm going to close this get all users this one also i'm going to close it all right now let me copy this url and we are going to make a post request to root url slash api slash message and then what is the path here it is new message so let's copy that let's go to postman and let's specify it here okay now with this post request we also need to send the request body but before that let me set the authorization token here for that i'll simply select this bearer token and the token will be auto populated there as you can see the token is auto populated here now let's go to body raw and there let's specify the object so first we need to set the chat id if you remember in the last lecture we started a chat between john and mark so for that the chat id is this one let me copy this chat id and let me pass this chat id as the value then let's specify the sender so let's say john is sending the message so for that here we are going to specify the id of john we can get the id of john from here or we can also copy it from compass so if i go to users collection from here let's copy the id of john so in this case john is the sender he is going to send the message so this is the user id this is the chat id finally let's also specify the text property and here let's simply say hey mark how are you so this is the message john is sending to mark and here we can also set the read property to true but if we don't specify it by default it will be false okay with this let's send this request and let's see if everything works well or not so here we are getting this message message sent successfully and in the response we are also receiving the the message object the message document 
so in the database a document in the messages collection is created with this id there read is false text is this text and chat id is this chat id and sender is basically john's user id now if we go to the database let's go to the database and here let me refresh it so now we have three collections let's first go to messages collection and there we should have one document as you can see this is the text for that message and this is the chat id sender id and this is the message id now if i go to chats there for that chat id so if you see this is the chat id so for this chat we sent a new message right so there let me go ahead and let me refresh this collection so there you will see that the last message is also updated it is updated with that message object if you see the message object is 686e if i go to messages collection you see the id for that message document is 686e so in the chats that last message is updated with that message id so our create message api is also working as expected now in the next lecture we are going to implement an api to fetch all the messages for a given chat because in a chat between two users we can have multiple messages so we want to get all those messages for a given chat and we want to send it to the client so that on the client it can be displayed all right this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day